The most successful stock traders are those who have some type of system that they use. They become experts at using the system. Think of anything you have ever done well. Didn't you have a system for doing it? Whether it is maintaining your car or cleaning your house, it is usually the system that makes it all possible. Once you have chosen a system that you think might work, start testing it. However, that doesn't mean going out and buying stocks right away. First, do paper trading. On paper, pretend that you have bought the stock using your system. Watch it and see if your predictions come true. You can use paper or a spreadsheet to do your practice trading. There are even investment websites that you can use to practice. As you practice trading, you should ask yourself, did you actually make any money? Don't forget to include the cost of making the trades when you figure profit and loss. Those transaction fees can nickel and dime you to death. One good system is buying stocks just before they split, holding them until they split, and then selling them. You will, however, need a computer and obviously need to be online to use this method. Stock splits are especially good for beginning traders because your entry and exits do not need to be so precise and you will also hold these stocks for several months or more after you buy them. You may ask yourself, why use stock splits? One, they are easy to find. There are lots of them if the market is up. And when they split, they may double or triple your profits. And also, they usually involve strong companies. That is why they are splitting in the first place. Each month, there are many stocks that split anywhere from 20 to over 60 in good bull markets. With this many opportunities, there are always a few good ones. If the market is down or going sideways, you may not be able to find more than a few stocks that are splitting. So why is it that companies split their stocks? Companies rely on the sale of their stock to run and expand their businesses. If their stock is doing well, the price will keep going up. As the price of the stock goes up, there will be fewer and fewer traders who think that they can afford the stock, so the sale of the stock begins to drop off. At some point, usually the CFO will recommend to the board of directors that they split their stock so that more traders will buy it. Remember, a stock split is not a good deal unless the stock is headed up going into the split and is a good company. The same precautions you use before buying any other stock should be used when buying stock splits as well. Stocks split with different ratios such as 2 for 1, 3 for 2, 3 for 1, etc. Many of them split at 2 for 1 ratio, meaning that for each share you held before the split, you hold two shares after the split. For example, if you purchased 100 shares of a stock at $100 per share, and the stock price went up to $101, what would your profit be? That's right, $100. If the stock splits 2 for 1, you would then have twice as many shares, or 200, but at one half the price, or $50 a share. So as the stock splits, you make no profit at all. However, after the stock has split, if the price of the stock goes up $1, what is your profit then? That's correct, $200, because you now have twice as many shares of the stock. Now you see how you make money from the stock splits. Remember that margin trading is when your brokerage loans you two times the amount of money that you have in your account. So, for example, if you have $2,000 in your brokerage account, you can purchase up to $4,000 worth of stock. With experience, you can use this leveraging to your advantage. Let's see how. So, for example, let's say that you bought a stock that was splitting two for one, and you used margin trading to buy twice as many shares as you would have normally been able to afford. You would then have four times as many shares after the split and your profit would be four times as great. Would you be interested in something like that? Now let's find out how to go about finding and filtering stock splits to find the very best ones. Here's the system I use for screening stocks that are splitting. First, we want a split ratio of two for one or better. Anything less than this won't make you much money. If you can get the rare split at a higher ratio, take it if it meets the criteria below. Next, we want our volume to be the standard safety minimum of 500,000 shares per day average. We want stocks with high percent increases over the past three months, 
we want something at least 10 to 15 percent. Next are weekly technical indicators. The trend of the MACD must be ticking upwards. If the long-term trend isn't up going into the split, it will not likely go up after the split, and it is after the split that we make our profit. Daily technical indicators, our entry point, the daily stochastic must be fairly low, just as always. And finally, the daily price bet. We want volatility. I want stocks with large daily spreads because they will make us the most money. Now let's take a look at a stock splits calendar. Go to this website after you have reviewed the next few screens. Go to the yahoo.com website and choose finance. Next, choose the investing tab and then choose stocks. On the right you can see the financial calendars. Here you can find the stock split calendar which shows the companies whose stocks are splitting. On the left you can see the all important company earnings dates which are critical. Before buying a stock you should always check to see when their next earnings report comes out. Never hold a stock just before this report comes out. Once you are in the website Screen the calendar for all the stocks that are optionable if you're trading stock options and have a 2 for 1 or better stock split ratio. The key here is the number on the right of the ratio must be 1. Write down the date the stock is going to split. Notice that some stocks jump up when the split is announced. Others rise sharply after they split, not before. These are general characteristics of stocks that are splitting. We discuss these in more detail in a moment. This is the screen you will see at the biz.yahoo.com website. This web page has a wealth of information concerning the stock market. If you will remember, I said earlier that before you buy a stock or option, you must first check to see when the earnings report is coming out. This is where you can find that information. When this lesson is over, you should go to this link and check it out. Looking on the right under financial calendars, you can see the link for stock splits. Let's go to that link now. Here is our stock split calendar for the month of March. Going from left to right we see first the payable date. This is the date the stock actually splits. You must own the stock by the close of business on this day to be able to participate in the stock split. Next we have the execution date. This is the date on which our stock account will show the change in the number of shares that you own. It is usually one or two days after the payable date, but I've seen it as much as two or three months later. Next, we have the name of the company followed by the stock symbol. After the symbol, we find out if the stock is optionable. If it is, the options will split at the same ratio as the stock, which is a great way to make money. After this, we see the ratio the stock will split at and the date the split was announced. You can look at the stock chart and see if the stock took a jump shortly after the split announcement was made. On this calendar, you can see that there are only a few stocks splitting. The reason for this is that the market as a whole was dropping quite a bit at this particular time, so stock prices weren't rising enough to warrant a stock split. If you look at the ratio column, you will see that of the four stocks that are splitting, only three are worth looking at because the fourth has a two on the right side of the ratio. So one at a time, we click on the stock symbol here, and the screen on the next slide will come up. As this screen comes up, the first thing we do is look at the average daily volume. This is one of our key safety checks, and if the stock doesn't pass this filter, we simply move on to the next one. If it does, then we look at the market cap to make sure it is over 500 million, and we also check the P.E. ratio to make sure it is under 60 if it's available. Once we have done this, we take a quick look at the three-month chart on the upper right. This is just a quick check to see if the stock has been headed up as we would like. If not, we simply hit the back button and go on to look at another stock. This stock has the type of chart that we are looking for. It is easy to see that the trend is definitely headed up and that is all that we really want from this chart. If it is, add it to your list to do further evaluation. The next step is to take all the stocks that have passed our quality and safety criteria and to further evaluate and compare them using BigCharts.com to look to see how a stock has behaved in the past 
when it was splitting or just to see if it has split at all during the past year or two. You can go to the Indicators button and then choose Stock Splits in the upper Indicator section. We mentioned Stock Split characteristics earlier. Here you can actually see them on the chart. The first arrow on the left indicates when the Stock Split announcement was made. You can see the, that the stock's price went sideways for a few days and then made a nice climb for a couple of weeks. By watching the Splits calendar each day, you can often catch these announcements buy the stock and hold it until the daily stochastic dips below 80. In this example, you could have purchased the stock at around 27.50 and sold it two weeks later at 29. As you can see on the far right of the chart, this stock took a tumble just before the stock split took place. Only if the weekly stochastic and MACD were headed up would we have considered buying this stock. The general rule is that if a stock is headed down into the split using the daily charts, it is not a good buy because the odds are that it will continue to head down. So buying this stock would have added risk. Now let's look at a stock from the previous month of February. Notice that the stock splits two for one on February 4th and that the announcement was made on January 8th. Now we look at the stock chart for this stock. Notice that when the split was announced on January 8th that the stock price went up slightly for a couple of days but then took a sharp drop. The market was dropping at that time and this stock fell with it. After a week of dropping and probably a lot of brokers pushing it because it was splitting, the stock price took a dramatic jump going from $27 all the way up to $35 just before the split. This is what we like to see in a stock that we want to buy. The time to buy this stock would have been as the slow stochastic turned up around the 23rd of February. The actual price we would have purchased it for would have been around $56 a share because that would have been the price before the split. The stock split when it was at $66 a share, so we would have made $10 a share or almost 33% before the stock split. The time to sell the stock would have been at around $35 to $36 a share as the daily stochastic would have dipped. The reason we would not have held the stock longer, as we usually would for a stock split, is because the market was in a major slide at the time, so holding on to any stock would have been dangerous. Here we have a chart of the NASDAQ Composite 100 showing what our splitting stock was up against in the overall marketplace. As you can see, there was a strong downward trend, which is why there were so few stocks that were splitting. As you can see, our stock followed the NASDAQ on the 13th to the 15th in a large decline, which is why we had to get out so soon. After you have found a few stocks that are splitting and look promising, go to BigCharts.com and do a further evaluation. Enter all of these stocks, one at a time, into Big Charts. Filter out any stocks that don't have a daily volume of at least 500,000 shares and a market cap of 500 million. Do this one stock at a time by going to the detailed quote screen. While in big charts, set compare to to NASDAQ so that you can see the percent increase of each stock. Rank the stocks that are splitting by their percent increase in the last three months. Here you can see how to set up big charts to do the compare to function. Place all the stocks you want to compare in the symbol box separated by a comma with no spaces. The stock that you enter into the top symbol box will be in black with the complete price bars and the other stocks you are comparing it to will be in various colors as you see here. On the right hand side of the chart you can see the percentage increases comparing the last price with the first price on the chart. After you have compared the stocks and weeded out some, keeping only the best, you can check the weekly technical indicators for each stock. If the weekly MACD and slow stochastic are not positive, scratch the stock off your shortlist. For those stocks that make it through the weekly filter, check the daily technical indicators for each stock. These will tell you when to enter and exit your trade. Once you have developed a pool of quality stocks that match your skill and objectives, begin tracking your top picks daily using the stock tracking forms. Make predictions and see how you do. Get to know the stocks you want to buy. Watch what happens when the split is announced, one week before it splits and one week after it splits. 
As you prepare to paper trade for the next day, you should fill out one or more of these sheets. To begin, fill in today's date at the top. Next, fill in the closing numbers for the Dow, which is the dollar sign INDU, and the NASDAQ, which is dollar sign COMPX. Now, fill in the various stock symbols you are paper trading. Next, if today's closing price was up compared to yesterday's close, circle up. And if it was down, circle down. Next, fill in how much the price was up or down. You can also use a percentage in this spot if you like. Now fill in the actual closing price along with the volume, which you can abbreviate, and whether the volume was up or down compared to yesterday. And finally, what the spread of the day was. Do this by subtracting the lowest price of the day from the highest price of the day. After filling out the bottom portion of the sheet with the indicator information, you need to make some predictions for tomorrow. After carefully considering all the indicators in the different time frames, predict what you think the closing, low, and high prices for tomorrow will be. If you are trading long positions, buying low and selling high, the low price will be the most important prediction because if you were actually trading, you would be bidding at or near this price. This is a skill that is critical to making money. The closer to the actual low price you get, the more money you will make. It is better to bid a little low some of the time and not get your order filled than to consistently get your order filled closer to the higher price of the day. If you are selling stock short where you sell at a high price first and then buy the stock back at a lower price, then the skill of choosing the highest price of the day tomorrow is most important because you will want to sell the stock tomorrow at the highest possible price. After you have made your predictions and then check them the following day to see how you did, you need to grade yourself. If you predicted that the stock price would go up and instead it went down, you should give yourself a poor grade. If you at least got the price direction correct, you should give yourself a fair grade. If you were close to the actual price, give yourself a good grade. If you almost hit the price exactly, give yourself a great grade. You will find that the more you paper trade, the better your scores should be. If not, then you are doing something wrong and you need to go back and review your trading rules. Here you have a spot to enter any notes to yourself as to market conditions, news, etc. that might affect the price of the stock tomorrow. The day after you have made your predictions, go back and look at how you did. Circle whether the high price or the low price was actually up based on which one you are tracking. Write in how much this price was up or down and the actual high or low price depending on which one you are tracking. Next, note anything that might have affected the price such as news, earnings, etc. The ADXR is a technical indicator that shows volatility. It is not available at this time on BigCharts.com and so I mentioned only in passing for those who have access to it. If you do, you may use it to help you make your predictions. Next, take a look at the 6-month weekly MACD. Is it ticking up or down? Who is in control, the bears or bulls? If the bears are in control of a stock that is ticking up, we expect great price jumps, more than if the bars are above the center line and the bulls are in control. If the bulls are in control of a stock that is ticking down, then we expect greater price drops than if bears are in control. This will help you in predicting the size of price jumps. Next, we do the same evaluation using the one month daily MACD asking the same questions. On this side, we evaluate the stochastic on the weekly and daily time frames. This finishes our lesson on paper trading. Once you have purchased the stock, that is, when you have received confirmation, begin selling calls, which are stock options, if you are holding the stock for one or more months. We will discuss this strategy in the next lesson on stock options. Whenever you hold stocks for the long term, say several months to several years, you should always sell covered calls on them. This way you can sell a stock at a price that you want and you get the added bonus of receiving a premium to boot. This is like icing on the cake. Now let's look at another system for trading stocks. This is a conservative and simple system which, of course, is the best kind for beginners. 
Let's now take a look. Another system for trading is simply finding good stocks, buying them at the right price, holding them until they are ready to start going down, and then selling them. Does this sound familiar? To do this system, make a list of all the stocks that you think are very good stocks with good yields. We'll show you how to do this a little bit later. Next, screen your stocks using BigCharts.com and compare the stocks using their 6-month percentage gain. Filter out any that are real performers. Next, look at all of them using Big Charts again and set the time frame to 6 months and the frequency to weekly. This way we get the long-term picture for all these stocks. Filter out and keep only those stocks where the slow stochastic has hit bottom around 20 and turned up. Be very selective here, which means you may have to wait until you find stocks that meet your high standards. Whatever you do, don't lower your standards here. Make sure that the MACD has also hit bottom and leveled out as well. Don't jump the gun here. Your patience will be well rewarded, so just wait if it is necessary. This chart is exactly the type of chart we are looking for. At the bottom, we can see the fast line crossing the slow line right at the 20 mark. This is the perfect spot for long-term traders. This will allow you to hold on to the stock for the longest amount of time. On this chart, we take a close look at the MACD. You can see here that the last histogram bar on the right is just ticking up. This is a confirmation of the stochastic as it has already turned up. As the MACD levels out, experienced traders will check the stochastic, and if it has turned up, as is the case here, they will try to purchase this stock during the next week. Beginning traders should wait until after the weekly MACD has ticked up, meaning they will try to purchase this stock approximately one week later and at a higher price. There is nothing wrong with this. We trade some profit for safety. That is the way to stay in the game and to avoid some gray hairs due to worry. After the long-term technical indicators have done what we want them to, we next turn to the intermediate time frame, which is the one-month daily stochastic, to find our best entry point. By following the indicators from the long-term, we achieve safety. By going to the daily charts, we then work on getting a good entry point to provide the greatest profit. Here is an example of how to use the daily stochastic to find a good entry point. On the 16th, after the fast stochastic line crosses the slow line and bounces above 20, we decide to get in and purchase the stock. On the 15th, the price range for the day is between 68 and 75. The closing price is 75. And we then anticipate that there will be a slight pullback during the next day to around the midpoint of yesterday's range at about 70, so we decide to place a bid for the next day at about 70. As you can see, we barely hit 70, and we're a little lucky to get our order filled. Our exit strategy will in part be dependent on the overall market trend and our stock's long-term trend, and the strength of this trend. As a beginner, one strategy is to exit the trade just after the daily stochastic hits 80. In this case, that happens on the 21st and we can place a sell order at around 90, which is the closing price of the day on the 21st. This is the safe play. With a little more experience, we might have determined that since we have a strong trending stock, that it would be likely that it would jump up early in the day as it builds on the huge jump in price on the 21st. We could have placed a higher sell order at around 92 to 95. Once again, Knowing what the market was likely to do the next day would have helped us to make this decision. It is important not to lower your standards here, especially as you begin trading. Learn to wait until a stock fits your criteria for success. Don't force your trades. Learn to be patient and wait. Set as your goal each month not to have any losses. This will put you in a frame of mind to be very cautious with your trades. Once you have bought and sold your stocks, wait until the stochastic drops down again and then get back in. Once you have formed a good pool of stocks to trade, there should always be a few that are ready to trade at almost any given time. 
Once you sell one stock, you just evaluate your pool of stocks and find the ones that are ready to trade. You can do this only as long as the weekly stochastic has not gone much above 50 and the MACD is still ticking up. Your risk increases dramatically as the MACD goes above the center line and levels out. Another way to use this type of system in an even more conservative fashion is to use the same screening techniques and criteria, but instead of watching the daily charts each day, use them only to get in and out of the stock. For those who are impatient and somewhat emotional as traders, this system will help you. The first step in this system is the same as the last. Look for a weekly chart that is bottoming out. Check the market charts as well to confirm that the new trend is forming. Use the daily stochastic to find an entry point, then hold the stock without stop loss orders until the weekly stochastic hits 80, then go back to the daily stochastic, and when it hits 80, sell. With this system you will not be watching the charts each day, rather once a week should be good enough. This will help you to take some of the emotion out of your trading. If you feel uncomfortable not having a stop loss, which is not a bad thing, try placing them only once a week and placing them near the low of the week before. This will give you some protection. Here is a weekly chart that shows how this strategy works. You simply follow the stochastic and MACD until they peak and then sell. Although short term trading is still my favorite because it is more lucrative and generally safer, there are many who simply do not have the time, energy or skill to use this type of trading. Let's take a minute and look at some of the differences in the types of stocks we would use for long term trading versus those we would use for the short term trading. A true long term trader does not use stop loss orders to protect himself. He does his homework, buys his stocks and then only checks on them occasionally to see how they are doing. To make this type of trading work you must have a higher quality stock. You need to have stocks that have done well for years not just a couple of months. Let's go now and look and see how we can find these types of stocks. What we are attempting to do here is increase our odds and to play the percentages. To do this we will use the following criteria to help us find our top long term stocks. We need to raise our standards and to weed out those stocks that are less stable. Our first standard to raise is one of our key safety standards and that of course is volume. Stocks with good volume, at least 500,000 shares traded on average each day, are safer and less likely to fizzle on us. We can raise this standard to 1 million shares to add more stability. Our next standard to raise is market cap. That is, stocks with high market capitalization are much more stable. When a company has several billion dollars, they are much more likely to be able to survive a market or economic downturn. For this reason, we want only those stocks with at least five billion dollars in market capitalization. If you are going to hold a stock for a prolonged period of time, it is important that you have a stock that is actually making money. A company that makes money year in and year out will usually do well in the stock market and is less likely to drop out of sight in a market downturn. A solid company should have an annual 52 week earnings per share or EPS of at least one dollar. Quality stable stocks should have a PE ratio of no greater than 40. Many of today's stocks in 2003 are highly overvalued even after a three year downturn in the market. The price of these stocks far exceeds their earnings. You will often find these stocks with P.E. ratios of 100, 200 or even higher. When the market turns down, these types of stocks will be the first to take a dive. Stocks with P.E. ratios around 20 generally have many months of growth ahead of them. Our next stop is market performance. Once we have found some quality companies, we want to choose only those that perform well in the stock market. Not all quality companies do well in the stock market. Any grade A quality stock should have gone up near 100% during a 4 or 5 year period. If a stock has doubled its price during the past 4 or 5 years, it is highly unlikely that it will turn and take a prolonged dive anytime soon. Once you have entered in all of the above criteria, you should end up with a 5 year chart that looks something like this. 
As you can see on this chart, these stocks have been stellar performers for many years. The poorest performing stock went up 200%, and the best performers went up over 500%. Aren't these the type of stocks you would like to be trading? Now we enter the world of stock screeners. These tools will not only save you hours of research time, but they will add a great deal of safety to your trading. This tool will allow you to take some of the emotion out of picking stocks to trade. It is much better to choose stocks based on their performance rather than the quality of their products or their management. There are many so-called experts who will tell you to choose stocks based on your personal skills, likes, or interests. Those who make these recommendations are really nothing more than amateurs. They have missed the real point of trading. And what is the real purpose of trading? Of course, it is to make money, isn't it? So let's go now and learn how to choose stocks that have the best odds of making us money. Half the battle in winning in the stock market game is choosing the right stocks for your objectives. Doing a careful technical analysis is absolutely essential. But which stocks do you screen? There are thousands of them out there. By carefully choosing and screening a stock before buying, you can save yourself a great deal of worry and money. However, there are close to 10,000 stocks out there. As a serious trader, what criteria will give you the best odds of success? We are now going to look at several ways to find stocks. Our goal is to create a pool of stocks that we can trade over and over again with safety. One way to find good stocks is by looking for stocks that have had a recent big gainer day. These are stocks that have gained 5% or more in a single day. Some news or event or upgrade is usually the driver in these cases. However, do not be fooled. Just because a stock jumps up big one day does not necessarily mean that it is a good stock to buy. There are thousands of these one-day wonders. This is merely an indicator that they might be worth looking at. You must still go through all your regular safety filters of volume, market cap, etc. To find these stocks, we need to go to www.bigcharts.com and find the biggest percent gainers in price for the NASDAQ. After we have looked at this process, you can go to Big Charts and look for yourself. After you have typed www.bigcharts.com in your address line, this screen will come up. Choose the tab for Big Reports. There are many outstanding reports, as you can see. As you have time, I would recommend that you look at some of these other reports to broaden your background. Keep in mind that these reports will lead you only to stocks that might be worth further investigation. Many of these reports will list stocks with extremely low volume or market cap, meaning that they can easily be manipulated, and many of them are. My favorite report is the largest percent gain in price. You can choose any of the other three major stock exchanges, or you may choose all of them one at a time. I recommend that you begin with the NASDAQ because there is less manipulation in this exchange than the others. For example, the nickname for the Amex or American Stock Exchange is the Pump and Dump Exchange. Get the picture? So we will begin with the NASDAQ. The first column we will look at is the percent increase in price. Next, we take a quick look at the volume column. Keep in mind that we still maintain our standard of never choosing a stock with an average daily volume of less than 500,000. Here we do not have the average volume, but rather the single day volume, so be careful. On a big gainer day, we would expect that a stock's volume would be much higher than normal, sometimes two or three times higher. So, of course, we automatically filter out any stock that does not have at least 500,000 shares of volume. This immediately excludes the first two stocks. The third stock has what appears to be sufficient volume, so we will choose the Advanced Charting button to take a more detailed look at that stock. The first thing we want to do is verify that our minimum average daily volume and market cap standards are met. We do this by going to the Detailed Quotes tab. Upon completion of this task, simply choose the back arrow button at the top left of the screen until you return to this screen. As the stock chart comes up, we quickly choose the Detailed Quote screen. Once we are in the Detailed Quote screen, 
we want to look first at the average daily volume. Here we can see that it is well above 500,000, so it meets our standard. We look at as many of these big gainers as desired, and those that meet our safety standards we add to our list of stocks to trade. This list may eventually grow as large as 100 stocks, and that is okay. This will give us a good pool that we can look at on Saturdays as we prepare for the next week's trades. A second way to find good stocks is to look at the leading stocks within various industries. To do this, we again turn to Big Charts and go to the Industries report. Here at the main Big Charts page, we choose the Industries tab. Here we have the industries that have done the best during the past three months. We have the option to change the time frame from three months to six months or a year or something less. We will stick with three months for now. As you can see, the top performing industry is platinum and precious metals. During the past three months, that industry has gone up 113%. This is an incredible jump for an entire industry. Surely there will be some companies within that industry that are worth buying. On this page, you can also see the industries that have done the worst during the past three months. Here you might find some stocks worth shorting or purchasing put options on. Let's see what companies we can find by clicking on the top industry. Here we have the top companies within the top industry. At the top right, we have the number of months that we are gathering data for. In this case, it is three months again. The top company is still water mining, and it has averaged 113% over the past three months. We can also see the worst performing companies in this industry. From this screen, you can make a list to check out later on Big Charts to see if they have high enough volume and market capitalization. Be careful here not to become so excited about these incredible stocks you have just found that you go out and buy them without doing your normal evaluation using Big Charts and your technical indicators. You will notice that one industry is absent from this list. So let's take a look and see if the technology and computer industry is worth looking at. You can do this by entering the keyword software and computer services under the search for industry box or looking for technology. By looking at the percentage change of the companies in this industry, you will probably want to track some of its stocks. Beware of the low market cap and low volume stocks, however. Here you can see some of the industries you may want to take a look at. Here we choose technology. Within the technology industry, we have several subheadings. We can choose software and computer services here. As you look at the top three companies in this industry, does the phrase, if it looks too good to be true, come to mind? The odds are that these stocks are penny stocks with low volume and that they are very risky to say the least. Penny stocks are not what you want to be involved with. The odds are stacked heavily against you. Some of the stocks listed here may however prove to be of value and it doesn't hurt to take a look. Just be careful not to get suckered into some of these highly manipulated stocks. Here we can see the detailed chart for the stock that went up 46,900% during the past three months. The volume looks great, doesn't it? But look at the market cap. It's only $64,485. I'd say that is a major problem. And look at the price of the stock, only four and a half cents a share. Is this the type of stock we would feel comfortable with? Probably not. Now we come to one of the most important tools you can have as a stock trader. In order to make money in the stock market, you need two things. First, you need to find the right stock for your objectives and for the market you are trading in. Second, you need to be able to get in and out of that stock at the right time. Stock screeners will help you with the first goal. A third, and the very best way to find good stocks to buy, is using a free program called a stock screener. This program is a huge database with almost all the stocks in the stock market. You can enter your preferred criteria and the software will pop out a list of stocks that meet your criteria. Over the years, various stock screeners have emerged. I've been forced to use several as the companies sponsoring them have dropped this service due to the cost of maintaining them. 
There are many of them out there, but the one I currently use is from Zach's Investment Research. To begin with, go to their website and then choose the Stock Screener button as seen here on the left of the screen. Be careful when looking at the news on this and other investment news sites because they often have a conflict of interest when presenting the news. As you open the Stock Screener, you will see this page. On the left, we have numerous categories, and within each category, there are subcategories. As you have time, you would do well to take a look at these various categories, but be careful not to become overwhelmed with the volume of information available. Information overload can lead to paralysis, and we don't want that. Next, we have a number of popular categories to help us to get started. These are many of the most commonly used categories. To the right, we have the Boolean symbols that we use to refine our searches. Here you can use less than or greater than. Further to the right, we can fill in specific values. And finally, we have the Add buttons to add their criterion to our screening criteria. From the Popular Items column, we have the three criterions I use as my safety filters. First, we have the market cap next the P-E ratio, and then the average daily volume. Now let's look in greater detail at how to use these various filters. We begin by choosing the market cap. Notice that this is in millions. Here we choose the greater than symbol and then enter 500 meaning 500 million. Next we hit the add button to search for stocks that meet this criteria. After we hit the Add button, our search criteria is added to our screening criteria. Notice that there are now 2,544 stocks that meet these criteria. Next, we add our average daily volume criteria, greater than 500,000. Our match is now dropped down to 1,519 stocks that meet both of these criteria. So as we continue to add various criteria, these matches will continue to drop. Our goal is to end up with somewhere near 30 to 50 stocks that we will then do a further technical evaluation of. We may have to edit and change some of the criterion in order to end up with this number. One of the most powerful and valuable criteria we can use is changes in the price of a stock. By searching for a specific percentage price change over varying periods of time, we can filter out those stocks that are not moving in the same direction as the major markets, and we can also find the stocks with the biggest moves in the direction we want. Remember, it is price movement that makes us money as we invest in stocks. So the more a stock moves, the more money we make. That is why it is critical that we find a stock screener that has stock percentage price movement as a category. Without this, the stock screener is only of limited value. Please note that sometime in the future, Zacks may no longer offer their screening service. If this happens, search online for another free stock screener that has the percentage price change category. Let's begin by searching for stocks that have a current price greater than 10 and less than 75. Next, let's find stocks with various percentage price changes for varying time frames. As we choose our criteria below, and hit the Add button, the criteria will appear here in the Screening Criteria box. We begin by entering a current price greater than 10 and then less than 75. Next, we choose stocks with a percent price change for 12 weeks of greater than 30 percent, 4 weeks greater than 15 percent, and finally 1 week less than 5 percent. After we have entered all these criteria, notice that the number of matches has dropped all the way down to just four stocks. In most cases, you will likely want at least 30 stocks to do further evaluation on. But for now, we will stick with our four. Once you have entered all the criteria you want, hit the Run Screen button to see a list of the stocks that meet all of your criterion. Here you can see the list of four stocks that met your entire criterion. Our next step will be to further evaluate them by looking at the technical indicators for each stock. If you would like to, you may sort this list of stocks by any of the columns simply by clicking on the column heading. You can sort in either ascending or descending order. To help you to keep track of these stocks and to sort and manipulate the data, you may, if you desire, 
copy the results of your search to a spreadsheet. To do this, select these stocks by dragging your cursor over them and then paste them into a spreadsheet. This is an easy way to keep track of your stocks. Once you have pasted your results into the spreadsheet, make a folder and give your file a name that has something to do with the search criterion. You can now use this list as you further evaluate the stocks based on their long-term and short-term technical indicators. On this screen, you can see a slight variation of our screening criterion. We've added the percent price change for the year to date, and we've altered the one week price change. The more you use these stock screeners, the better you will become at making these alterations so they get either more or fewer matches. You will often have to make adjustments due to current market conditions. If you find no matches when you are done, you may decrease the percentage gains. However, it is important that you not lower your standards when it comes to your key safety filters of market cap and volume. You may increase these if you have too many stocks to screen. This will give you better quality stocks, but never lower them. Here you can see the results of our newest screening criterion. We have the nine matches. Again, you can sort any of these columns by clicking on the heading as we have done here with the one week percentage price change. Notice that the stock at the top of the list, SDXC, went up 9.74% during the past week. As we go down the list, the percentages decrease. Whenever I do one of these searches, I always sort by the one week percentage price change. The reason is that the stock at the top of the list will usually have a high daily stochastic, and those at the bottom, if we have a good sized list, will usually have the stochastic near 20 or 30. So, depending on what I am looking for today, I can then begin evaluating the list starting at either the top or the bottom. This stock came from the top of our list and had the highest percent price change last week. And as you can see, the daily stochastic is very high. If my intention is to buy the stock as a long buy, I would have to wait at least a week for the daily stochastic to drop down. Or I could try looking at the bottom of the list for stocks that had not gone up very much or that had dropped during the past week. These would most likely have a daily stochastic closer to 20. After you have finished setting up and running your search criterion, you may want to save your list of stocks for future reference. You can either copy and paste your results or you can choose the export button at the top as you see here. This will then export the results to your spreadsheet. During this process you will be asked to either open or save the data to a file. In most cases, begin by opening the data, setting it up the way you like it, and then saving it. Once you have the spreadsheet opened, you can manipulate the data any way you wish depending on what you are looking for. You can print out your list and mark it up based on what you find when looking at the technical indicators. This is a good way to track your trades and monitor your positions. Over time, you will get better and better at using the stock screeners, and you will find them immensely helpful. They will save you a great deal of time and, based on the safety criterion you use, they will help you to choose stocks that are safest to trade. The time you invest learning to use this great tool will more than pay for itself. When we have a bull market, one of my favorite searches is one to find stocks that have not only done well for the past six months or year, but ones that have done well for the past five years. To do this, I look for stocks that meet my usual safety criteria for market cap and volume, and that have gone up the greatest percentage during the past year. Then I take this list of stocks and use the compare to function on bigcharts.com and compare these stocks over the past five years to find those stocks that are truly strong performers. Let's go now and look at this process. Next, let's go to Big Charts and see how the stocks at the top of our stock screener list differ from the ones at the bottom. To further screen the stocks from your search, you will need to compare them over time to see which ones are the best for your needs. In this case, to find the highest quality stocks, we choose to look at which stocks have done the best over the past five years. This is a powerful screening criteria to separate the short-term big gainers from the truly strong stocks. Set your time to five years and the frequency to monthly. Now enter the stock from the top of your list in the symbol box at the top of the screen. 
Next, go to the Compare To tab and then enter the stocks from the list in the symbol box, 10 at a time, separated by a comma with no spaces. Hit the red Draw Chart button to redraw the chart. You will notice that the stock you entered in the top box will appear at the top left of the chart, in this case PBR. Under this stock you will see all the other stocks that are being compared. Each stock will be listed with a different color that corresponds to the percentages on the chart. On the right side of the chart you will see the percentages. The stock that you have entered into the top symbol box will appear as a complete black price bar, while the other stocks will only appear as a colored line. In this chart you can see the power of using this search criteria. These four stocks have gone up from 500 to 3500 percent during the past five years. Not a bad group of stocks to work with. This is the power of using a stock screener. It greatly speeds up your search for great stocks. By knowing the right criteria to use you can find stocks that are safe to trade and that have great performance as well. Once you have found this group of great stocks first, go to your weekly charts to determine the direction of the major markets and then go to the daily charts for an entry point. As this chart shows, it is about time to buy this particular stock. The stochastic has already made its turn upwards and the MACD is likely to follow. As you can see here, after you have run your search, you sort by any column by simply clicking on the column heading. At the top of this search we have the stocks that have had the lowest percentage increase in price the past month. Therefore, the stocks at the top should have charts where the daily stochastic is low near 20, whereas the stocks at the bottom of the column have positive percentage increases and their stochastics should be much higher, approaching 80. If you were looking for stocks to buy long, you would begin at the top of the column and if you were looking to sell stocks short because the market was heading down, you would look at the bottom of the column. Notice the stock symbol FLIR at the top with a 16% loss for the month. Now let's look at the daily chart for this stock and see where the stochastic is. Also note the stock GTI at the bottom of the column with a 9% gain over the month. Which stock will be better for buying a long position? Let's look at the charts and see. You can see here that the stochastic for FLIR is down near 20, as we anticipated it would be. The question now is, should we buy this stock? The answer is definitely no. First, this stock has dropped a great deal in the past month, meaning that there is a great deal of negativity and that the stock will likely take some time to make a turnaround. Next, the stochastic has not turned back upwards, nor has the MACD started ticking up. It appears that GTI is the better of the two stocks to buy long at this time. First, there is not as much negativity. The stock, after some large gains, took a drop but now appears to be headed back up. The fast line of the stochastic is just crossing the slow line, which is the perfect time to buy long. So, based on looking at the top and bottom of the column, it appears that maybe we should look at the bottom first due to current market conditions. Let's look at what the current market conditions are so that we can better understand why this is. It's easy to see from this chart where the market, in this case the NASDAQ, is headed. With all this negativity in the market, the stocks that have dropped the most have too much negativity to overcome and so are not good stocks to buy long at this time, while those that have a positive increase over the last month are still positive even after the dip at the end. When day trading or short term trading, it is important to follow the major market indexes such as the NASDAQ Composite 100 shown here. Most day traders ignore this and focus only on the intraday charts trading on 5 and 15 minute swings using large volume and eventually end up out of business. At the very least, day traders should follow the lead of the daily charts because for them it will be the long term and the 60 minute charts will be the intermediate time frame and the 15 minute and 5 minute will be the short term time frame. Short term trading is not to be confused with day trading or intraday trading. It has the potential of making you considerably more money than regular long term trading however. 
It is conceivable that you could make five to ten times as much money short-term trading because you trade more often and hopefully profit on most of those trades. The key to successful day trading is finding good stocks and knowing exactly when to get in and out of a stock. The precision of the entry point is critical in order to make a profit. In order to be successful at day trading, you also need to have access to real-time data. You can use the real-time big charts provided by TD Ameritrade if you have an account with them. There are also several good software packages with streaming real-time data. When day trading or entering trades during the day using real-time streaming charts, there are several things to look for in the stocks you want to buy. It is important that you try to avoid as much risk as possible. First, you want large volume, maybe one million or more. We want stocks that are stable and predictable. Two, we want large daily price spreads. 8% to 10% or more is very good, and this way you can get in and out on the same day or 24 hours and make the largest profit. Three, we want high percentage gainers in the past Stocks that have gone up more than 50 to 100% in the past three months, if it's a strong bull market, or 20% if we have a bear market. Again, what we are looking for is stocks that make dramatic swings in price on a regular basis. Even when day trading, I always like to trade in the same direction as the long-term charts. It is just safer and more predictable. So I recommend using the six-month weekly chart of the stock you are trading, as you see in this chart. Here we have the long-term stochastic just turning up at the beginning of June. As long as the weekly stochastic is headed up, we trade only long positions in general. Of course, there will be exceptions to this rule. As a day trader, for example, you might short the news for a stock if it is very bad. If the hourly MACD is below the center line at the end of one day, then buy the stock because it will go up the next day. You know this because the weekly and daily technical indicators have shown this. By holding a stock overnight, you avoid the pattern day trader rules, meaning that you don't have to maintain $25,000 in your account. Day traders hate it when I say this because their motto is, don't hold anything overnight because you never know what tomorrow may bring. They say this because they are not good at looking at the technical indicators in several time frames like we are. They are not willing to do the research and planning that it takes to make a good short-term prediction on the stock's price trend. The daily stochastic on this stock is headed up. Therefore, we know that any time the hourly indicators dip down, that they will head back up within a few days at most. So when you see a pattern like this, which is verified by the MACD, it's a great time to buy at the end of the day when the price is low. A play like this will usually last from one to two days. Here is my tip of the day. The best time to buy a stock is after 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Watch the hourly MACD. When it levels off below the center line, then watch the 15-minute stochastic. When it hits near 20, then watch the 5-minute stochastic. As it hits bottom near 20, it is time to buy. Place a market order and you will get very close to the best price of the day on a regular basis. Here is another hot tip. The best time to sell a stock is in the first 30 to 60 minutes of trading as it peaks often in the first 15 minutes. A very common pattern is when a stock has begun going up in price, it will peak in the first 30 minutes and then drop until around 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then it will head back up until 2 p.m. Then drop once again and head up near the end of the trading day ready to buy again. Amateurs go crazy during the first hour but they are often too exuberant and not realistic. Very often on a play like this, where you catch a dip at the end of one day and sell early the next morning, you will be able to make from 5 to 10 percent, depending on how strong the stock is trending. The trick here is to do your homework and to come up with a good plan. Spend the time to determine which stocks have the best technicals. This means spending time looking at numerous stock charts. The trick here is to ride a good stock up for several days or even weeks as the daily stochastic goes from 20 to 80. You can play the hourly MACD, buy when it levels out below the line, and sell as it levels out above the line. Plays like these will often take 3 to 5 days. When day trading, you are best off using the 1 hour 
then 15 minute, then 5 minute frequencies on your technical indicators to determine when to get in and out of a trade. If the market is headed up, then wait for the 60 minute MACD on the stock you are watching to level out below the center line. That is a very important rule. Wait until the hourly MACD levels off below the line. Once that has happened, watch the 15 minute stochastic until it hits near 20. Then finally, watch the 5 minute stochastic and when it hits 20, buy. This will be very close to the low price of the day. The rule here is that once the daily stochastic has hit bottom and turned up, never buy a stock long and never even look at the shorter time frames until the hourly MACD has gone below the center line and leveled out, signaling a change in trend. The next few slides will repeat and summarize what we have just gone over. Once more, you are safer, even when day trading, to follow the weekly trend as indicated here. There is not a good reason to trade counter the long-term trend. It is riskier and generally not as lucrative. To be safe, make sure that you have one uptick or downtick to confirm a trend change. Don't jump the gun just because the MACD levels off unless you are a very experienced trader. Don't allow greed to drive you to trade too early. By following the long-term trend, you can avoid the mistake shown on the left of this chart of assuming the daily MACD is going to break through the center line. When looking at hourly or 15 minute charts, when the MACD bars cross the center line or the MACD line crosses the EMA line, that is a significant move and the price will usually follow. In this chart, you can see that even though the MACD is ticking up below the line, the price does not move very much. By waiting until the MACD crossed the center line, which is the safest play, we really didn't lose much of our profit. As a day trader, we can make a play like this just using the 15 minute swings in price. In this example, we could enter our trade just before 1 p.m. and exit just before closing. In this case, we would have made around $5 a share profit in just two hours. For this stock, the 60 minute MACD is ticking up, meaning that we can go to the 15 minute charts for our next indication of the trend change. In this case, as we watch the streaming real time data, Knowing that the trend is up, as soon as we see the dip in price, we prepare to place an order. We would most likely begin watching the 5 minute charts as they dip at the start of the trading day, and then place our trade as they turn up around 10 a.m. In this case, we could have gotten in at $40 and out at $41.50 within an hour for a small, quick profit. This is how the day traders work, following the intraday charts and catching the ripples in the tide. Here's the 5 minute chart for the trade we have been discussing. As soon as the MACD levels off is the time to buy this stock. As you can see by just following the 5 minute MACD, you can make good money as a day trader, especially if you know what the longer time frame charts are doing. When looking at weekly stochastic charts, either an upturn below 20 or a downturn above 80 is significant and will usually precede an indication of change from the MACD by as much as a week. As a safety precaution, wait until the MACD ticks up, but by seeing the stochastic turn, you are alerted that the change is coming soon so that you can prepare. As your time frequency shortens, so does the significance of changes in the stochastic. The shorter the frequency, the more likely that the trend change will not be prolonged. This is why it is important for day traders to learn to take the money and run on their short-term trades and not to turn into longer term traders. The mindset for short term and day traders is different. Short term traders are willing to hold trades overnight, but should be cautious not to hold them too long. One to ten days will usually squeeze enough profit out of a stock, so learn to take the money and run. Leave a little profit on the table. You do not need to squeeze every penny out of a trade. As a short term trader, you will usually trade during the day using real time streaming charts. But don't get the idea that there is only one perfect time each day to buy a stock. As you can see on this 15 minute chart, there are three or four good entry points. This is often the case as the intraday time frames bounce up and down. 
If you miss the first entry point, don't get scared and jump on the bandwagon as the price jumps up. Simply wait a while and the odds are that the price will drop at least one more time once the market is taking off like a rocket. Patience is a virtue here as it usually is. As your 15 minute stochastic bottoms out as it does here, it is time to begin looking at the 5 minute charts for the final signal to enter your trade. You can see on this chart that the 15 minute stochastic kept trying to break through to 80. However, the hourly MACD was still headed down and as long as it is headed down the 15 minute stochastic won't make that breakthrough. You can see on this chart the advantage of catching the hourly MACD just before it ticks up. On this play, using only the hourly time frame, you could have made 15% in just two days. As a general rule, it usually takes from two to four days for the hourly MACD to go from leveling off below the center line to leveling off above the center line. When trading in any time frame, it is important that both of these technical indicators give the same signal before trading. Sometimes the stochastic will give a false buy signal and you don't want to fall into this trap. Always confirm with the MACD before trading. When there is a strong trending market, you may not be able to wait for the stochastic to dip down to 20 before you buy. Always know the type of market you are in and what type of stock you are trying to purchase. This will help you to interpret the indicators. In some cases, you may need to trade as the stochastic dips and turns up before it reaches 20. You can see the value of using both indicators before trading. If they both give the same message and signal, you are much safer. Before trading any stock, you must determine what type of stock it is. Is it a strong trending stock, a rolling stock, or a dog stock? Once you have determined this, you can better evaluate the technical indicators based on the characteristics of these types of stocks. Strong trending stocks do not like to go down. The emotions of the crowd trading them can be seen in the charts. Dips are only short-lived, and we read all the indicators with a positive eye, assuming the best. Dog stocks, however, those that have been dropping for some time, are shadowed by negativity, and we expect the worst from them. Knowing what to expect will allow you to make better decisions on what is most likely to happen in the near future. In this chart, you can see how the indicators seem to work together. If the stochastic is low just as the MACD breaks through the center line, the odds are that the price jump will be larger and more prolonged. If, on the other hand, the stochastic has peaked just as the MACD breaks through, it is not likely that there will be a big pr price jump and the odds are that the price will drop down shortly. When you own a stock that is doing as you expected and going up in price, don't be in too much of a hurry to get off the horse. Keep riding until it is worn out. As long as it still has energy, keep riding. Wait until the stochastic dips back below 80 before getting off. Remember that the stochastic will usually give the signal of a trend changing one tick before the MACD. So when you see a pattern like this in any time frame, it is a warning to prepare for the change.